Hello everyone, I hope you're having a great day. Uh, today's story is Picasso and the Girl with a Ponytail by Lawrence and Holt. For Sylvia who opened doors for me. Picasso and the Girl with the Ponytail. A story about Picasso by Lawrence and Holt. Lawrence Holt is also the illustrator to all of these books. It was the first day of summer. Sylvia and her friends were sitting on a terrace in the sun. Sylvia was so shy that she always sat a, a little apart, but she listened to every word. Have you heard? Picasso is staying right here in Versailles. It's incredible. The most uh, famous artist in the world. Every picture he paints is worth the fortune. I heard he had a huge white car sent from America in exchange for just one painting. Sylvia was very interested. Secretly, she, beca she dreamed of becoming an artist. In a suitcase under her bed was a sketchbook full of her drawings. All of her secrets were locked inside that suitcase. Things no one else had ever seen. Suddenly, Sylvia noticed something absolutely amazing. Right in front of her eyes, a beautiful picture had appeared over the terrace wall. Look, shouted her friends, it's Sylvia. Only Sylvia has a ponytail like that. Sylvia hid her face in her hands. Her, uh, she heard a roar of laughter from behind the wall. They all ran to look. They saw a man holding the picture above his head. He was short but very muscular. He wore a striped shirt, uh, shorts, and a, a pair of bedroom slippers. It was Picasso. I, I saw you all from my studio, he laughed, and I made a sketch. Come on, why don't you come visit me? Sylvia was last inside the door, her heart beating like a drum. The studio was a treasure house as if the artist had never thrown any away a single thing. Every surface was piled with bits and pieces, Ten, uh, tins of paint, scrapes of wood, uh, strange sculptures, children's toys, broken pots, a cowboy hat, flowers, painted, uh, painted plates, a boomerang, fish bones, a clown's mask, a birdcage, guitar, a bullfighter sword, and more than anything else, Sylvia saw paintings, hundreds and hundreds of them, each one signed with a single word, Picasso. Picasso was still laughing. He was 73 years old, but he acted like a young boy. Now then, he shouted, I will draw one person. Who will it be? One of Sylvia's friends stepped forward quickly. She was very beautiful. You can draw me, Mr. Picasso, she said. I will sit for you. Picasso looked at her quite fiercely. No, he said. Uh, you saw my picture outside. I have chosen the girl with the ponytail. Sylvia felt a bit sick. She wanted to run straight out of the door. But Picasso was very kind. It's all right, he said gently. You can trust me. Come and sit down. Sylvia is too shy, teased her friends, and too dreamy as well. That's good, laughed the artist. Then we will get along, because Picasso was a dreamer too. Come back another time, he called to Sylvia's friends. Sylvia and I have work to do. Picasso looked carefully at Sylvia. She began shivering. Here, borrow this coat, he said. Then he began to draw. The first drawing was slow and careful, a delicate pencil study. The second picture was larger. Sylvia as, Sylvia as still and nervous as a wild deer. Then Picasso began to work faster and faster. The pictures grew larger and more strange. Picasso was enjoying himself. At the end of the day, Sylvia ran home. She took out her sketchbook, but her head was spinning, and none of her drawings came out right. 
The next morning, Sylvia returned nervously to the studio. Perhaps Picasso had forgotten her, but he opened the door and grinned at her like a schoolboy. Little by little, the paint, paintings became more daring and more extraordinary. Little by little, little, Silviette became less shy. Picasso seemed to change every moment, just like his pictures. He was as proud as a king, he painted like a magician, and yet he liked to dress up and play games. Sometimes he put on funny hats and masks to make Silviette laugh. He told her about the animals he had owned dogs, a goat who was allowed to sleep indoors, and a bad-tempered monkey. Once he had uh, even kept an owl. Of course, Picasso had painted them all. Although this, uh, um, all through the summer, Picasso created pictures of Sylvia and sculptures and cardboard and metal. As the work became bigger and bolder, she became braver, too. Sylvia's uh, father had left home when she was very small, but that summer, Picasso was like a father to her. Shy Sylvia was, the, was with the most famous painter in the world. It was a real fairy tale. One day, Sylvia plucked up her courage and showed Picasso her secret sketchbook. She told him about her dream of becoming an artist. Picasso didn't laugh or tease her. That's good, he said loudly, loudly, but you have to be brave and learn to let go. Look at me. When I'm angry, I make angry pictures. When I am sad, I make uh, my pictures are sad too. And when I am happy, my paintings is full of joy. Even my dreams are in my work. There can be no secrets in painting. That afternoon, a photographer came to the studio. Sylvia hated having her photo taken. She wa uh, waited, uh, wanted to hide away. Then she saw Picasso making funny faces at the camera, and suddenly it didn't seem so bad. The man took dozens of pictures of Picasso and Sylvia beside the paintings. Her friends couldn't believe their eyes. Shy Sylvia on the front cover of a famous magazine. And before long, every magazine wanted a picture of the Picasso's new model. Girl in Paris and London were even copying her hairstyle. They all wanted a Sylviette ponytail. Sylviette cut out all of the photographs and locked them carefully in her suitcase. Sometimes Picasso worked late, at, late into the night. One Sylviet saw him behind the studio in the middle of a pile of garbage, hunting for interesting objects. The richest man, the richest artist who ever lived, uh, made sculptures from old junk. Sylviet had seen uh, some of them in magazines. A baboon with two toy cars for a face, a bull's head made from a bicycle seat and handlebars. Sylvia loved watching Picasso work. Painting, sculptures, and painted pots poured from him like a volcano. At last, Picasso started a huge sculpture of Sylvia with old pieces of pottery for the arms and legs. It had a long neck and a round bag just like hers, but the head was so strange, Sylvia didn't think it looked like her at all. As she watched, Sylvia had a sad feeling that this would be the last time Picasso would use her as his model. Since the day on the terrace, she had been in his work. Soon, it would all fade like the summer. While Picasso worked, Sylvia, Sylvia began telling him her secrets. She talked about the time her father had gone away. Sylvia had kept a special picture of him in her suitcase, but she had never told anyone how hurt and lonely she had been. Picasso looked up at her with burning black eyes. It is very hard when people move apart, he said, but try to remember. With every door that closes, a new door opens. It began to grow dark. As they looked at the sculpture, Sylvia told Picasso a secret she had locked away and tried to forget. 
she talked about um, the man who had come to live with her mother, and a, a, a loud, unpleasant bully. Sylvia was sometimes so unhappy that she wanted to run away. Picasso looked at her kindly. Then he jumped up. You have given me an idea, he said. I knew something was missing from the sculpture. Sylvia must hold something in her hand. Picasso began searching through the bits and pieces on the table. He tipped out a drawer onto the floor. At last, he found what he wanted. In her hand, Picasso announced, Sylvia holds a key. He pushed a big iron key into the hand of the sculpture. Sylviette looked puzzled. She had a key because she has so many secrets locked away. Picasso fixed the key in place with some plaster. But she also has a key, listen, Sylviette, to open new doors. Then Picasso reached out his hand with uh, a plaster and gently touched Sylviette's face. Look, it is finished, the girl with the key. Now, Sylvia, I would like to give you a present. You may choose any picture you like. Perhaps it will help to open some doors for you. When Sylvia stepped out of Picasso's studio for the, first, uh, for the last time, she was carrying that very first picture. She held it carefully because the paint on the signature was not quite dry. For Sylvia from Picasso, a beautiful girl, a beautiful picture of the girl with the ponytail. After that summer, Sylvia began to paint as bravely as Picasso had taught her. Gradually, she became a well-known artist herself. When the picture uh, Picasso gave her was sold, Sylvia had enough money to pay for a beautiful apartment of her very own. With space for a real studio high on the top floor, with views across the whole of Paris. Sylvia ran up the stairs. She turned the key and opened the door. Pablo Picasso was born in Spain in 1881, the son of an art teacher. He could draw before he could speak, and by the time he was 12, he had started to produce astonishingly skillful oil paintings. Throughout his life, his uh, output in every medium uh, was matched only by the extraordinary range of his styles. For depicting etchings to massive and terrifying paintings like uh, Guernica, uh, Picasso's work was always pioneering and brutally honest. I hope uh, you can see this is actually a true photograph of uh, the real girl, Sylvia. And you can see the, uh, the drawings and paintings he had done uh, when she was his model. I hope you enjoyed the book, uh, Picasso and the Girl with the Ponytail. It's, uh, uh, the author and illustrator is by um, Lawrence and Holt.